you go ahead, Chuck. It's your turn. We were in Johannesburg, South Africa, in um, a tent meeting with predominantly Zulus. This was uh, two years ago, I think it was. And it was on a Sunday morning, and it was just, you know, reconciliation is wonderful, but when it is orchestrated like it was this morning by the Holy Spirit, it's just so powerful. And uh, the, Lord, the Lord that morning uh, spoke to our pastor, Brenda, and... Uh, and, and she called one of the little mamas up. He asked for the oldest mama in the whole. Well, we did the plantations too there. Remember? Oh, I, she needs to tell it. She's wanting me to tell it. She needs to tell it. Come on. And like she said, it was just spontaneous. And uh, some of the women, Lila called for those that had plantations like I did this morning, oh, that right. they had been on the plantations. Have you got it now? You want to finish no, it? No, go ahead. And we did, in our own, we had a tour group. We took over 40 ladies and two of them, I believe two or three, That's right. their forefathers had had slaves oh, from South Carolina. And even there was a lady from England that was there. That's right. She apologized for them, for Britain, for what they had done. And it was so powerful. And the Lord said to, oh, to wash the blacks' feet. And I asked the pastor, oh, I said, will you get me the oldest and the poorest black woman? Oh. She was a Zulu. She was a Zulu from that tribe. I want to wash your feet. And so they brought this little mama to me. And I said, Oh, I got in the floor. her feet I wasn't humbling myself oh I wanted to do it we owed it to him oh God forgive us oh 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 and I kissed her feet oh Is what was so humbling to me. The pastor said, now she must wash your feet. Oh, I said, oh no. He said, she must. She must wash your feet. It's the most humbling thing I ever have gone through. Uh, 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 the injustice it's been done to these people. Oh. Oh. That's why I bring Verl to these conferences. I want the black on our platform, ladies. Oh. And when they began to dance last night, I said, Lila, they are welcome on my platform. Before this conference, I was just finished a conference up in Pennsylvania, Delaware. Whoa. Oh. 
and I laid down to take a nap. And I had a quick vision. Oh, and the way I describe what I saw was like if you would ride in the countryside and I saw water on, each, on one side of the road. It was like a water spout that was shooting up. And I looked up the word, uh, the water was flowing over the road and going into the other side. And I looked up the word water spout and it said it was a culvert. It's like a gutter. You see, it was downed up. It couldn't go through. And when you get too much pressure going through under the road, like it was a, I don't know how to describe it. What do they call it, Lila? Culvert, but it came, but it was downed up. There was stuff, debris in it that was stopping it up. And I, I didn't understand all of that yet, but the Lord's showing me this morning that that's the way you've been. You've come here and things have been clogged up with ladies. And he's wanted to move among us. And we can't understand why we're not healed, why we're not moving. And the anointings that we're yearning for and the doors haven't been opened for us. Whoa, 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 ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. And as I went off to sleep, I didn't understand it at first, but I heard the scripture, deep calleth unto deep, at the noise of thy water spouts, and his waves and billows, oh, roll over me. And I went off to sleep, and I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw myself out in the ocean. And there was a wave. Whoa. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and it was quite large, and it came toward me. But it only showered me. Mm -hmm. The scene changed. Mm -hmm. And I saw a huge wave come. And this wave was, I was in a boat this time, and I was afraid, and I said, oh God. But immediately I had great peace come on me, and he let me know that I'd be all right. And you know, we were over here just now talking, talking about a wave. Still hadn't got what God was showing me, but the Lord showed me, oh, that waves when the hurricanes start up. Oh, they come off the coast of Africa. Mm. 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 To, the south. to the south. Comes here to Pensacola. We just had one bypass us. It had to be dealt with here, ladies. It has to be settled here. And if we'll all be so honest with the God and repent, if you have any prejudice, I mean even the blacks, if you have prejudice in your heart, if you can't repent with us, please leave. Mm. You whites, if you cannot in your heart mm. repent, I'm asking you to leave right now because I mean business and the ones that are going to stay are going to mean business with God. And he's going to hear our prayer today. We're going to settle it. It's going to be settled. My message, the Lord, like Lila said, he's preaching my message for me. We're living it out right now. Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda, was I was going to preach on this morning. It's a house of mercy. A house of kindness. Whoa. And 
I believe that healing is going to be released to the nations from this day forward. I want to tell you, I don't know when I've been around this purity of heart. People have asked me why I do what I do and not just stick with the black conferences and wondering why I hear some of the things I hear and still go back. When you have seen the kingdom of God, your purpose is greater than your color. But I want to say to my black sisters that are here, you know as well as I know, there is prejudice among us. I go to conferences and I have black women to turn their face away from me. Oh, she's the one that does the white conferences, some say. I have gone to conferences, I've ministered to black sisters at altars that their identity is poor because they have longed to be white. You need to repent because God made you special for who you are. And we have no right to take that specially and take it for granted and treat it as common. And we don't have any right to be sarcastic or cynical or condescending about it. There is something about us that's different. And a lot of times we don't get invited to conferences because we're not understood. But I can't stop being who I am. But, listen, but, I am a woman of honor. I am a woman of integrity. I am a woman that doesn't try to be Neither do I try to be more black than I am. For some people, I'm not black enough to some blacks. And for some whites, I'm too black. And you can't please all of the people all the time. But when I focus my face on God, his pleasure delights me. And I want you to know, you have sisters among you that are too black for you too dark-skinned for you. Their hair is too coarse for you. If they don't wear it, they don't go get the perms, and they don't do what you do. If they're black and God made them that way, and you don't want anything to do with them or associate with them because their diction is not good, their English is not good, they speak Ebonics, and they do all those kinds of things, and they're too black for you, then you need to repent today. In Jesus' name. Come on. Stand up, black women. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. You know it's true. You know it's true. One of my girls are here. Johnny, raise your hand. I call her my girl because she's my girl. She's in her 60s, but she lives in Washington, D.C. She knows what I'm telling you is true. When you go into the inner city, you see it more. I have been in places because I'm not from the inner city. They think I'm rich, blacks think I'm rich, and they think that I'm not black enough for them. If we don't reconcile, we call each other the N-word, but we, we get offended when we hear it from other people. I'm talking to you now. What everybody else does with it, God is going to use the sisters, the white sisters to deal with that, but I'm talking to you now. Am I speaking truth? Come on, you out here in front of me. Am I speaking truth? Yeah, I'm speaking truth. A lot of you, hallelujah, are, are, are even need to forgive your black men 
because I hear it all the time. They've left us and they're marrying white women. And you need to forgive and repent for the black sisters that are standing there. We have taken something that is precious to God. And we have gotten offended. And we are causing more problems in the atmosphere. And we're trying to pray against stuff and we're causing the problem. Hallelujah. I see black women very dark skinned that are ashamed of themselves. They're ashamed. People look at them and wonder. They're almost, their skin is almost blue. And people look at them as if they're a freak. They have, we have very light-skinned women from the 50s and the 60s when, when slaves and, and the white got together. My mom is very light-skinned and blacks used to call her red and it's still in her spirit because she was ostracized. <laughs> Because she was hurt by her own black people because of the color of her skin is light. In her heart, she's a black woman. And we've done that. The lights, the blacks, the straight hair, and the nappy head. It's time for us to be who we are. We are very different, very different. There's a portrait that says black is black. From the very lightest to the very darkest, black is black. Now let's repent for our black brothers, our black sisters, and let's stand together and let's say God, 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 God forgive me. There is a woman that's different than me. There's a woman whose hair is straighter than mine. There's a woman whose hair is not as nice as mine. There's a woman, oh God, right in my family Lord God that I know everybody has turned against because she's a different color her mom and her daddy has all light-skinned kids and one dark-skinned one and that dark-skinned one gets left out of everything Lord God release healing virtue now in the name of Jesus release healing virtue in the name of Jesus hallelujah we kid about our hair and we say we wish we had this and we wish we had that I put a perm in my hair but I want you to know you need to thank God hallelujah for who you are and how he made you I'm not offended about my hair this is what I have And it shrinks up sometimes and some people don't get a perm and, and you're sweating and you're looking at people funny and wondering among yourself. Come on. The grace of God. The grace of God. Your grace of God be released to you right now in Jesus' name. Father, say I open myself up to all that you have for me right now in Jesus' name. And some of you need to intentionally on purpose just go, hallelujah, to conferences where they are predominantly white. As long as you know the Spirit of the Lord is pouring out, some of your white sisters need to go to some T.D. Jakes conferences and break strongholds that are going on. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm going to tell you something. It's easy to love T.D. Jakes. You don't have to live with him. We love his preaching. You don't have to live with me. And maybe some of you say, well, I love Verl. You know, I know she's black. You don't have to live with me, but there's people on your job that don't act the way that you think they should act. All black people aren't like the people from Good Times and, and Amos and Andy and, and all of that. We are, we are different. We are different. When Bill Cosby's the show came on, white people would tell me that's not really black. Well, what color is he for God's sake? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. We're different. There's rich blacks, there's poor blacks, there's, there, there's blacks that dress one way, there's black, just like everybody else. We bleed just like everybody else. We hurt just like everybody else. Black sisters, it's time to be bridge builders and to know that your purpose is greater than the color of your skin. You're going to hear some things that you say, well, I thought we were all Christians. Why do they say that? Oh, yeah, we need some teaching on some of the things that offend other blacks. When you're in conferences, when you're around people, and they wonder, why did that black person turn from me? There are some things that if you say around black people, you're going to offend them. 
It really are. And if you want to know how I've been taught to be a bridge builder, Lala preached it this morning. There's certain things. There's certain things you just can't say. We do. Maybe we need to have a workshop on that or something. Yeah, that would be awesome. There are some things, but I'd rather do it with you than anybody else. I have not met a white person anywhere that has your heart woman of God that has your heart and I stand hallelujah I stand Lyle and I say when I go back to my church I commit to you you have a church that will pray for you we have blacks and we have whites in our church but I pray in the name of Jesus that the same spirit that God is releasing through you in this hour that he releases there in Maryland we will pray for you we will pray for you week by week month by month we will ask God what to pray because I know God's going to use you in places hallelujah to teach things and to and to bring revelation. We need it, mama. We need it. And I don't mind calling your mama. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I think we need all the Girl Scouts to go ahead and leave now. The cookies that you're going to be sailing are outside. Because uh, this is real army in here. These are real troops. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. We have some ladies here who are from, we have uh, some are from England, we have some who are Japanese, we have some who are Cuban, and we could not possibly get through all of the things that we need to cover. So what I'd like to do is ask a representation of those just to come up here and stand, and you can give us your representation of... Uh, Yes, come right up and just stand right here. Just stand in a line. Just a representation. That's it. You can come with her, Bonnie. I promised her you could. Okay. Okay. This lady is Jewish. And which nation are you with, honey? Korean. Korean. I'm biracial, I'm Japanese Irish. Japanese Irish. England, England yes. England. England, okay. Ecuador. Ecuador. I'm Indian. From, my mother was purebred Indian. I don't know what tribe she was from. My husband's great grandmother was purebred Mohegan Indian. I'm from the upstate of New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Cuban. I'm Irish, but my grandfather was Spanish. I'm Indian, but I'm from the Fiji Islands. American Indian and Spain. Philippines. 
Come on, get on up where I can get to everybody. What you may not know about me is my husband and, and my sons and my grandsons are all registered Wyandotte Indian. And uh, so I'm very tuned in to that. I think I'm a mixture of black and white. I'm not sure. I know my song came from somewhere. <laughs> Madagascar. Madagascar. Aloha, I'm representing Hawaii. Yes. I'm from Nicaragua, Central America, Nicaragua. Argentina. 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 Oh, okay, did I get everybody? I'm not from, a, um, I'm from America. I'm, yeah, I'm not from, I'm Hispanic, but I just feel like the Lord is really wanting me to, to mention this. My father-in-law is a, an Assembly of God minister, and he had three sons, and my husband is his youngest son, and they're white, and um, his daughter, his oldest daughter, married a Mexican, and, um, and his son, his second son, married a Filipino girl that was born in Philippines, and I'm Hispanic as well, so we have white and Hispanic and Filipino in our immediate family, and my sister-in-law, the oldest, just adopted in June four little black, girl, uh, black children, Three, three girls and a, and a little boy. And God is doing that unity. We, we represent, you know, there's, you can break it down, but the black, white, Hispanic, and Asian all in our family. And I feel that God is going to begin to do that. And we, people go to my father-in-law and talk about the project, ask questions, and it doesn't bother us, and we embrace it. Amen. And so we have a complete circle, so I just... Just, I don't know Amen. I'm You're living out an intercession. I represent Cuba, and I want to say something. Uh, you know what's going on in Cuba right now. The, all those people are slaves, and we have to repent because we are reaping what we have sown because Cuba was one of the major centers of distribution of the slaves to the United States. And as a representative of Cuba, I ask the Lord to forgive us so that we can be free because right now we are slaves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just let it come forth from everybody. Come on, everybody, everybody participate. Father, we just, we just come now, Lord. Collectively, Lord. Oh, por los españoles, Señor. Ahora, Señor. Oh. Necesito la sangre. Necesito la sangre de Cristo Jesús. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Aleluya. Hay uno, Señor. Hay uno. Hay uno en Cristo. Oh, Jesus. It doesn't matter, Lord, who we are, where we're from. We just bring about, Lord, just an awesome move of reconciliation today. Yes. Now, all of those who receive the forgiveness that you have been extended, who, who, someone's repented to you, someone's asked you to forgive them, and you are willing to forgive them, you're going to say, I forgive. Because that's part of what we don't do sometimes in these meetings. We all get up and do all these repenting things, and nobody gets up and says, okay, we receive it. So I want to know we're forgiven. I want to know we're forgiven. I don't assume it happens. I don't, you don't have to do it. But I want to know, are we forgiven? Do we release each other in forgiveness? If we are all forgiven and you release everybody, get to your feet right now. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. God, I hold nobody in bondage. I hold no culture, no race. No people in bondage. I hold no one of my own race, Lord, and my own gender in bondage. Oh, God, but we release and we set them free. Free to be who you made them to be. Free to enjoy your, yourself. Free to enjoy us. Oh, God, we extend a freedom 
and a grace. We extend a freedom and a grace. We extend a freedom and a grace. When we tend to hold each other in bondage, we are the ones who are slaves ourselves. God has come that we might be free. I need to let you white sisters know today we celebrate you. There are many during the times when slavery was so ugly that took our people into their homes, took care of them, risked their lives. There are many that you are related to. We don't know who they are, but we celebrate you. We thank God for you. And we thank God we're together. And we want you to know from the black sisters here who may have had those that were running or those had been freed and somebody took them in. It could have been your mama, your mama's grandfather or your great, great, great grandmother or that fed my great, great, great grandmother and hid them so they wouldn't have been killed. So we know blacks that many of our white brothers and sisters risked their lives for us. They risk their lives for us. We have to know the whole story. And we won't know it all until we get to heaven. But I want to know as much as God wants us to know. We need to pray to get revelation. And we need to pray for this woman of God that God is using to destroy the yokes that have held us for too long. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Well, this, I think, I don't know what we're supposed to do next, but uh, a couple of things that, um, here comes Brenda. Here comes Brenda. Okay. Ah, oh, she's got herself together again. I must say, I know for a change. Yeah. There's, there's one last thing be, before Brenda takes us here. We're getting many different messages and, and, and uh, things, and we appreciate all of them. Uh, something that needs to be said, I think, at this point is what happens in this room needs to be taken back to your churches. It needs to happen on Sunday morning. It needs to, you need to take it back to your cities. And uh, one of the questions was, uh, what about repentance for the atrocities of the Klan? Well, hopefully a lot of that's been taken care of, but we have uh, someone here with us today from Milan, Tennessee, uh, that could give you uh, just a, a brief moment. She'd come up here. Whose husband was in the Klan for 48 years. And we can see the power of God through repentance can break bondages. Intercession can go places and break bondages that even lasted for 48 years. Here's the little lady. Take a minute here. Um, this revival has greatly touched my life and I wanted to, I came first time in 96 and we were part of an intercessory group that revival broke out in our church that day. But, uh, my husband was not saved at the time, and he was a he was in the KKK. He it was generational. He uh, was racism, hatred, and prejudice. And as I came and got in the intercession, the Lord began to show me how to do the very things these ladies are talking about. And I I feel impressed that there's some of you out there who may be saying, "Well, you know that's fine and good for the nations, but my husband's a heathen. My husband hates. How do I change that?" Intercession. He will show you exactly, as Lila was talking about, the boundaries. As you pray and seek his face, he will show you when, where, how to pray. He'll show you what to do. He had me to go to the beach of Pensacola. He told me I was going to do this, that I was going to repent to a black man for what white man had done to him, for, for what my husband had done. And God totally set it up on the beaches of Pensacola. I went and I saw a black couple at like six o'clock in the morning. I went to them and the Lord gave me the boldness. You know, you think, well, how could I ever do that? The Lord gives it to you. He fills you with it. 
and I went to him and I apologized. I repented. He didn't understand it, but come to find out his wife was a Christian and she did. And three weeks later, my heathen, hating husband was gloriously saved. Here. Here. <clears throat> We live in Milan, Tennessee, and God absolutely put the pieces together in the puzzle for him to get on a bus of our men, come to this place, and get so gloriously saved. And uh, if you, and I'll advertise the Miracle of Pensacola video here. Uh, there's a video out called Miracle at Pensacola. My husband's testimony is on there, as well as a lot of other awesome testimonies and a wonderful sermon. And if you have not watched it, you need to watch it, and you need to take this back to wherever you live and let this enter into your heart because this is time. It's time. It is time. It is so time. And he, my husband, I'm telling you, is... Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. He is the most godly man. He not only was a, mm, he not only had racism, hatred, and prejudice, but he, he ran around with women. He abused me. He neglected our children. But God can take the impossible <laughs> and make it the possible. But he, it's not going to happen without this kind of intercession. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, that is too weird for me, get it out of your mind right now. Because I'll tell you, there's nothing too weird. God's had us to do some of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my whole life over the past five years. But we have seen thing after thing after thing happen. Thing after thing after thing break. So I just want to just want to encourage you, don't push this on the shelf. Get it down. Uh, absorb the notes you've been taking this week and jump right in because our wives, our children, our parents, our grandparents, God wants them. And it's up to us. God bless you. I want everybody to go back to your seat. This is what the Lord is showing me to do. First of all, I want everybody to leave when you leave today, and we're going to be dismissed after this. When you leave today, I want you to go out this middle aisle with your purse, everything in hand. You won't be coming back, but you are going out, and we're going to have a blue cloth on the floor, symbolic of the Pool of Bethesda, that you're going to walk through it, asking God to free you, release you. If you're sick, we're declaring you're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. Your families are going to be delivered, set free. It's the beginning. We're declaring that in the name of Jesus. You believe it? Yeah. Amen. First of all, we're going to receive his wave. I want the intercessors to come. Just sit in your seat, and we're going to bring the wave, and we're going to just bring the wave over your head. Deep calleth unto deep. Lisa, come Give us some music for this, please. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. His waves and his billows roll over me. Don't you want his waves? I don't want the enemy's wave, but I want his waves over me. Hallelujah. Just stay seated. I need one down the hall, first of all, out this aisle, and then as it goes over you, you, you can be dismissed. God bless you. Lord, release your healing in this place. Release your glory to women all over the nation, Lord, all over the world. Thank you, Father.